How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Creator's Process. And today, I'm here with none other than Maria the Romantic. How are we doing today? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, well, I'm doing pretty good. We had an amazing fo a photo shoot, so I'm very yes. happy with that. And um, yeah, I'm feeling kind of special that you're interviewing me. I feel kind of cool about that. Well, it's my pleasure. I've had a few requests off... Um, on my page and all that, and everyone's like, get Maria on your channel and all that, and so I'm like, okay, alright, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> like, and I had to meet you, the famous Maria the Romantic. Oh, gosh. And, um, You're so, sweet. Oh, <laughs> and so, for people who um, may not know who you are, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, so, I think, I'll try and be like concise and straightforward, I am uh, a life model, uh, and I would say, predominantly I would say performance artist, um, theatre maker. I'm based in Melbourne. I have done a show for The Fringe and so yeah I'm really passionate about that um, kind of I guess interactive theatre and um, being able to really like involve other people in my process um, but I love you know um, video and photography as well. Fantastic. And, and so I love drawing. I, mean, <laughs> I, I always forget to say that. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And so, um, with the life modeling, how long have you been in that area for? Um, so, I got a notification the other day just to remind me that um, it's been two years. Wow. It feels Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I started in 2018. I modeled for a friend um, who was running sessions, and I remember just being really serious about the process. And I was like, I don't think I can even blink. You know, and I was just like staring and like got all um, weird and cross-eyed. Um, but I, I knew that, you know, for, for years I wanted to do it. And I knew that that was the beginning of actually committing to doing it regularly. Yeah. Fantastic. It's always funny when like you, you go into life modeling, modeling and you think, oh my gosh, am I meant to blink? Am I meant to breathe? Am I meant to, you know, but yeah. then everyone's just like, just relax, yeah. you know, you can do that. Yes. <laughs> like you have full right to just like take a deep breath and yeah. like show that you are alive. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, it's not like the artist, like if you have to breathe and they go, don't move your stomach. Yeah, <laughs> it's none yeah. of that stuff. But it's, it's, was it like a, um... You don't get paid for dying. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And um, so tell me what your first experience was like when it came to your first life modeling class. Um, it started happening pretty quickly. Um, I just met a few of the artists and, and they recommended me to the sessions. I mean, I think early on I was really nervous about um, changing poses and I was yeah. nervous about like, I guess I was still getting to know my body so then I, for a 20 minute pose, I would sort of be a little bit awkward in some way and then my leg would go numb and I will decide to, um, you know, like have to stop the pose and voice that and I think it's really important to give yourself the freedom to be comfortable and um, I think for me it's always been a passion to dress up to um, I'm kind of vain in that way and I love that like just you know I'm like walking past a mirror and I'm just like thinking oh that's a good angle that's a good pose and so I'm really like I love this feeling of like bringing art into my everyday life Okay. And, and that is, it's beautiful to feel that, I think, it's, yeah. there's enough stress, so make it, make it um, nice and pleasurable when you can. Fantastic. Was it something that came, um, so you said it came quite natural to you, so like, um, yes. was it something you had to teach yourself over time, or was it just something that you just, it clicked to you straight away? I think that, you know, there is always like that vision and, and feeling of like, oh yeah, I'm good at, good at this, but then when you start to really do it, there are a lot of practicalities, like there are, you know preparations like you've got to make sure that you rest and you know maybe get a massage um things around the session that you do um and then obviously like really like having good communication is important so those things that you you need to like really be in the work to know and um and simple things like i'm really glad i did the life model society um training because you know having your robe on when you're not modeling, it's important it creates that distinction yes. um, of this is my, you know, work and this is what I'm presenting and then, you know, that's like that, you create that barrier which, yeah, which allows course. people to feel comfortable and professional around you and, um, you know, those things you learn and I think uh, people sometimes I think do life modeling casually 
and they may not go through that training because they're like, oh, it's just something to do on the side casually and they may miss out and, and that mm. could potentially make them feel unsafe in certain situations. But I think if you, like it is worth committing to and mm. I think that there is a difference between doing life modeling casually and doing life modeling as a committed kind of Absolutely. career path or job or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. And so... Did you know automatically, uh, as you said, like, you know, how there's two different ways. There's either the casual life modeling or it's the one where you want to commit to it. Yes. And did you know that you wanted to do some, this is something you wanted to commit to? Or did you think it was only going to be a casual thing? I only thought it would be a casual thing if I, like, I thought, how, how will I get out there? And like, how will <laughs> I get more, um, you know, jobs and, and things like that? I mean, I wanted to commit to it. Like, I always wanted to be paid for something that I enjoyed and I was good at and I've yeah. gone through definitely work that just gave me like money for a period of time but then drained me um, and with life modeling obviously I need to pace myself and not overdo it um, but that's also a learning curve but like yeah. there's definitely um, a feeling of wow I'm actually doing something I enjoy and I'm getting paid for it which is wonderful so it has really given me a boost and yeah. confidence in pursuing my like creativity and my creative practice and especially through the period of COVID and yeah. um, you know then that's a whole other story of like being able to <laughs> run my own classes yeah so that that's a whole other um, thing that's a, happened where uh, I started to actually then model weekly yeah. which has again made me step up and learn to yeah manage my energy levels and then also uh being able to like really be in my creative flow hmm. like generating new ideas every week um and connecting with artists all around the world and then seeing how people work not just in melbourne but you yeah. know what are the standards okay. and you know upholding standards i think yeah. there's yeah what is that Absolutely, and I think that's definitely one of the best things about, like, I think that's come out of being in lockdown, doing these uh, yeah. Zoom sessions. You get to not only meet people in Melbourne, but you get to meet people all around the world as well, and that would be quite an experience. Yeah, and strengthen that community. Like, yeah. I think we feel like, as, you know, as, as, as a stronger community, I mean, it's cool. Yeah, I love that's this cool. feeling. Yeah, and um, you said that you've been starting to do your solo, like, your solo, um, yeah. run your own classes. Was that really hard to like uh, start that up or was it something that came natural to you completely spontaneous like oh, yeah. I think everyone was like oh my god what do we do we have all this free time <laughs> and I love working with the video format I love like um, sort of looking at angles and, and, and playing around with that and so it was cool I, I was a bit nervous at first and I had um, I actually modeled for my beautiful friend John Luke <laughs> so you know it's a little hat off to you um yeah so I modeled for him and then I was like oh I think I can actually do this and then it, I was like will anyone show up and they did and then I kept going and then it has gone through so many phases wow. where I was like can I do this and yeah but it's become a, a really cool thing that's fantastic and so like you say that you go with themes and all that is it do you find it hard to figure out themes or do um, mm -hmm. Do you have specific things you like to mainly focus on, or is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, it, it's really just led by inspiration. Like I'll see a movie or I'll hear a <laughs> song, and then it's like this thing just goes into my brain, and I'm like, oh, and then I see the visual for it, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm that's my mood this week. Yeah. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. And I try to like diversify, like and, and have a variety of different things. You know, sometimes I. Yeah, I like to be quite or like ultra feminine, and I would like to have you know, like I guess take inspiration from these classical kind of ideas of beauty, mm -hmm. and then I like to kind of scramble that and play around with that, and yeah. have like androgynous looks, and and mm -hmm. I like to really just be able to play these characters. I think it's really fun, but I definitely mm -hmm. don't I have some ideas of what I want to do. But it does occur, like, just on its own as well, organically. Yeah. Just to going, yeah, what am I feeling, you know? So it's kind of like you, when your mood portrays the type of thing that you're wanting to do in that week, in a way. Is that Yes. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so, mm -hmm. like, if you're, like, in a happy mood, you go with a happier thing. But if not, then well, is it, like, something uh, like that? Or? Yeah, I guess 
for some things, yeah, it's planned in advance, like it's yeah. two weeks in advance because you have to allow for promotion and you have yes, to give people an idea and then there's all this time you've got to like take promo photos and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Is it an enjoyable process? Like, do you really um, enjoy the lead up to it or is it something that's a lot of work? Or... <laughs> sometimes I feel like a real, I feel like I'm really mean to myself sometimes. <laughs> like I'm like, this like, like director of like, no, another hour. And like, I get really tired and frustrated with myself for sure. And I get headaches. Sometimes I've been, in, you know, like in it for too long. Like I'll have a session and I'll take photos afterwards and I have exhausted myself properly. Mm. So just being okay with taking time yeah. away and, and and letting people know about that and um, yeah like I, I think I love it so I'll do it and I don't think I'll get I would I don't get as tired yeah. you know doing it as if I if, if maybe if I was doing something else that I didn't enjoy I'd probably get tired more quickly but um, this I have like almost like an abundance of energy but I have to stop yeah like sometimes I'm just like, okay, that's it. I didn't get that shot or I got this shot and just like freaking leave it. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely for you. It's important to like take a step back and just look after yourself. And then when you're feeling like you're ready to go back into it, you just jump back into it. You feel that. Yes. I feel that it does force you. I mean, your body will let you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes we listen, sometimes we don't, but the... I think creativity has to have an ebb and flow for me. I need to be able to give and then take a step back yep. and, and then like recoup. Um, Cause if I'm, even if it's, that's what I realized, I guess, you know, um, I was like, Oh, I want to do my creativity, um, creative stuff all the time. And it does get tiring and then it's not as enjoyable. And it is one of those things that I really look forward to. So I don't want to like mm. just drain it. Yeah. And absolutely. I, I like being honest in that way I like being honest with like going okay if I'm doing this character I am actually three days before already in that character and feeling yeah. it and, you know it makes it cool mm. like that yeah but yeah no it's interesting when you said like you you want to make sure that joy doesn't come take get taken away because yeah there's mm. sometimes that joy is taken out of it because you work yourself so yeah. hard and then suddenly you're just kind of going oh I have to do this don't I but then you don't want that to be like that because it's something uh, you enjoy doing <laughs> yeah there's there's you know, there's definitely like not so glamorous kind of parts of <laughs> it. looks great and awesome, but you know, like there's times where you're like, so, um, I don't know, in a crappy mood and like you're yeah. itchy and like you're sweaty. Oh, and yeah. uh, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just want to satisfy what I need to do. Um, but you know, like you push through at times I've, I don't know, just forgot to. Keep have a really them. good dinner or something and yeah. I'll be like really hungry and I'm like thinking about that snack. It does, it does. I think it's just being able to like, like just move on, you know, yeah. not get too hung up on things yeah. that haven't worked. You know, you just Absolutely. move on. I think that's really important. Yeah. And not get like, be too hard on yourself if it doesn't work at the end. Like, that's, no. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just move on. Things, mm. time will move you on anyway. Absolutely. Just go with it. Yeah. I think I always try and tell people that myself is like, you know, if it doesn't work, it's okay. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's yeah, like, yeah. there's always something else you can try out. At least you know that it, it's not going to work, yeah. you know, at the yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. Because it's always, because um, I've known people who are always fixated on the one idea and they're like, it's going to work, it's going to work. And then they've tried all these different times and it's just like, mate, why don't you just call it a day? Yeah. <laughs> it just seems like yes. it's not working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give, your, give yourself the space to... Mm not be um, a slave to it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we have to. I think that's what I'm learning as well with some other things I'm kind of doing and creating. It's like, okay, I need to be able to step back. I need to like leave this, you know, it's like shedding the skin and then letting like, it's like I had this metaphor where the creativity is like this like thing that gets born out of you and then like you shed the skin and then you see the shell of it and you're able to like, like, oh. observe it, <laughs> um, you know, but not completely mm. just be stuck with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And because um, I remember you said before that you do theatre, like you've been working on. Do you want to tell us a bit about your theatre? Like what yeah. you've been working on? Yeah, sometimes actually, because I've got my fingers like, you know, in so many different um, areas, I forget that I'm like, oh yeah, I do do that. Oh yeah, <laughs> I do do that. Oh, you know, it's like sometimes it all feels a bit separate, but it does. I think essentially come together or it can because I do my life modeling is kind of theatrical as well yes. like when I do it for myself um, 
Theatre is something that I didn't study. Um, <laughs> I'm not like a, a theatre nerd, um, but I am a bit crazy for performance art, and I love um, I love street art. I love things that are interactive, and they kind of interrupt, like, just the everydayness of yeah. people, and then like people can just view something in a in a new way, or um, can be provoking for them, yeah. and they. Kind of draws them to be present so and I generally with my theater um, I guess I like to tell you know stories or I like to tell my own story and I like to share things that are uncomfortable and that are shameful and I get a real kick out of doing that and then connecting with people in a, in a deeper yeah. way so um, at the moment I that is another thing I'm really grateful for to be doing more professionally and regularly I mean I produced a show on my own two years ago for the French. I had received help. Um, mm -hmm. I had a director and all that stuff, but I had to just, you know, as I do with like my own life modeling as well, like I'm, um, you know, I do my own makeup, I do my own lighting, I get some help from my partner, which is amazing. Um, but like I put on all these different hats. And so with theater at the moment, it's amazing because I have um, my beautiful friend um, who is producing for me. And so he's got a bit of a, a collective, of different artists, and um, we will be hopefully presenting next year at Adelaide French and Midsummer here in Melbourne. And um, I am doing a like a character of Marie Antoinette. That's one of my acts. So <laughs> I do also with my performance art, um, like a kind of a burlesque type of performance. I call it grosslesque. <laughs> because it is um, not very pretty. In some ways it is okay. alluring and nice, but it's also um, something that is just uh, grotesque in the sense that I, I like to work with food and like okay. really messy <laughs> and, and kind of give you something that you may not expect. My performance, I would say, it's I, I do call myself an erotic performance artist because I, I bring that, um, like, the embodiment of, um, you know... Eroticism and sexuality, and I and I would like to normalize that or, or give it um, a different context. And, yes. I don't know. Diversify it, I think. Things yeah. Yeah, get a little bit like boxed up. So I like to be across all these different um, areas and making it accessible for people and yeah. bringing things to conversation. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing a show and I will be Marie Antoinette in the... 21st century um, with a phone <laughs> and <laughs> nice. all that stuff so um, yeah it will hopefully go ahead because you know we've been working on this and and unfortunately we don't know mm. <laughs> whether we can like really bring theater out into the world yeah no that's it and but that no, sounds very fantastic limited. yeah that sounds like a fantastic project and I love the term that you use what was it uh, grow Grotesque. Well, like grotesque, the um, <laughs> grossless. That's it, grossless. Yeah. <laughs> that's I like. That I, I've taken that. Someone's <laughs> someone's watched my performance somewhere and they've said that. So it's not my turn, <laughs> but um, I I've definitely embraced it. And you know, I get very inspired by, you know, uh, queer art, and I am amongst that collective of queer artists. We are. Um, well, I'm learning a lot from them anyway, and. A lot of um, inspiration comes from, you know, drag shows and just the creativity and the humour <laughs> and the exaggeration and the spirit and something that's just so larger than life. And I love that. Yeah, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's fascinating to me yeah. to see people make a, an effort. Like, you know, in my wild dreams, I've just got an abundance of people I'm working with and, you know, I've got like big studios and we've got awesome upcycled materials and we're <laughs> like creating all these beautiful sceneries from wow. you know, ancient times um, but we're making it like for this current time so yeah well, it sounds like you have a lot of good projects coming <laughs> up there, hopefully so. i'm yeah. just i'm kind of i'm saying that now so i'm like yeah, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm visualizing it so maybe it will happen mm. yeah well i'm looking forward to seeing some of those come up and well first of all i want to say a big thank you just for sitting down by me and two home and talking to you yes, about this stuff. Yes. It's been fantastic. It's absolutely Likewise. amazing. This is like probably, you know, my kind of 
first official interview. <laughs> Normally I'm like, it's always done by like texting or writing or you know, like different sort of um, styles, but this has been really fun. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Just a casual talk about art. That's what we do here. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for watching and I would love to have you um, come to draw me online. Yeah, absolutely. If you're an artist. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, please guys go and follow uh, Maria on her Instagram. I'll leave all the links in the um, in the description down below so you can follow her on any of it. If you're around the area, yeah. hire her for a photography shoot. I've just worked for her today. Honestly, absolutely amazing. Oh, very sweet. And <laughs> yeah, like if you guys have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.